Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I don't want to take the credit for the whole list. <laughs> <laughs> no, not. Uh, but thank you so much for organizing this and having me. And it's a great pleasure just being here at Portugal and enjoying my time here. So thanks very much. Uh, let's jump right in. Let's see if I can move the steps. I'm asking next. Look, I saw another picture of me. <laughs> I'm from Germany. I moved from Berlin to Munich. So nearer near the Alps, uh, enjoying my life there. Uh, but now, and weather. Less than it is. <laughs> uh, I'm a user researcher at Jimdu. I uh, studied with uh, Falik at Code. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the work I did, and hopefully, you can take away something for you and build better AI experiences afterwards. First of all, Jimdu, which I already mentioned it quickly, uh, it's a website builder. We really focus on the German market and on solopreneurs and micro businesses, so businesses up to three people. Um, we just help them with basic websites. Nothing fancy, it just looks decent. Um, and it brings you the way it like to the internet and accessible for your customers. And we have some other functionality added on. Um, everything you need basically to start your solopreneur business. Wow. And we built it with dump, very dumb. Uh, chatbots, a lot of things that were just giant things that seemed smart at the time and really turned out not to bring any value to users. Um, because there was this shiny thing, this human in a server, AI. And investors, founders, CEOs really wanted us to build something with AI. So we started getting on it and we quickly realized we don't really know how AI can create real value for our users. So in the end, AI is really just the tool for us to build an experience. So how can we actually create value from it? And I think that UX should be one of the driving forces to bring user value from AI. So how do we get to that value? And we can go back to all our uh, methods and all our theories we have about how we can actually get to the user value in the first place. And it's probably by understanding user needs, their desires, their problems, and really understand what we can build for them by talking to real humans or AI ones, depending on who you talk to. Um, and I brought an example of how we did that at Jimdu. Um, we built an AI chatbot because building a website is hard, especially if you're not techie, if you're not a designer. It's hard to start and deal with all these colors, with the content that you have to write, with the layout, and you have so many options and so many combinations that really don't look good or help you answer that. So when people come to us, it's mostly because they want to start a business. They have a business idea. They are probably very, very good in one specific niche, maybe pottery, maybe as with, um, marketing, maybe um, consultancy in general, but they, they're really specialists specialist in their fields and they might not really be good at marketing maybe not a building a website, and we want to help them. So the first thing you know what you have to do is when you start a business, you need a website. People know this, especially in Germany, and there's a few things that you need to remember. We legally complained, every German thing. <laughs> um, but it also has to look good at some point, and you need content for it. And a lot of people come to us and don't have an idea what they want to put on their website. They just need a website. Um, and currently we have a very simple big puddle where you select a few things and then we propose you basically an empty page. Um, it's just a template or two or three. It shows those depending on which test we have product right now. Um, and we thought now with AI, now with having this new shiny technology, what can we do to actually improve this journey? And then we thought about a target experience. So a target experience for us means a thing that already exists in the real world, which might not be digital at all, that you can replicate now with this new technology. And for us, it's pretty straightforward. It's creating a website with an expert. So think about an agency. They guide you through the process of creating a website with you. They do the designing, they ask you questions, they help you position, um, and they really help you put the whole process in help you think basically about your business before creating your website as well. Or maybe it's just your RFSDs 
it was not worth copying us. So. Um, and that's how we basically started. And we really take the label kind of a geek range of us and ask people, experts, agencies, how they actually um, do this process with their customers. And then we built a beautiful mind map. Um, and we basically came up with four pillars that our AI should follow to mimic this experience of creating a website with an expert. So first of all, it should be an expert, quite straightforward. It should be flexible, it should be personal, and the user should feel in charge. So what does that mean? The AI is an expert by mentoring and offering guidance uh, through suggestion and feedback. It is flexible uh, by meeting user needs and allowing them to feel in control and enabling to choose to go at their own pace. It's personal, because again, it understands users' needs, goals, and expectations, and their experience to ensure that their needs are met. And users are in charge. By being proactive, the AI can enable um, users to actually um, achieve their goals by guiding them through it step by step. With these basic ideas and the first thought of and the first hypothesis of what an experience like this could look like, we went into Wizard of Oz testing. And we already heard that finding the right users to test with can be expensive, can be time intensive. Um, so we did a different way. With the Wizard of Oz test, just a quick recap, um, it's a method where you act as the experience you want. So we acted as the AI. We had a team of wizards in our case, because it was kind of a complex thing we tried to, to build. Um, and the users basically interact with this interface through which they feel like they are doing the real thing. They are actually writing with AI, at least that's what they think. On the other side, uh, our team of wizards were basically sitting and writing and doing the whole thing for them. So we actually um, thought about this onboarding experience of like, how do we create this first draft of your website? It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be personal, and it has to be your website. Um, and we tested it in the live funnel. What does it mean? You actually came from word of mouth, from maybe our ads, maybe just Google us, um, and you landed on Jimdo, on the landing page, you sign up. Then there was an AI consent, but we were in Germany. Mm. Um, <laughs> and then we had a chat there, and you could just start chatting with us. And we were just sitting there and waiting for customers, basically. We had it as, set up as an A-B test, so basically just as many people as we could handle would come in. And we were doing the simulated chats, whatever we wanted or needed. And then after the chat, we would create the whole website, or at least the draft, and then bring you back to our normal product into the website builder, and then they continue the same way. They would never know that they have interacted with the team of wizards, or thought that they have went through the normal now a new and updated thing. We put in like a beta tag and said it might all feel a little bit wonky and take longer because we were not as fast as the AI. But uh, they didn't really know what was happening. And we then sent up follow, follow up uh, surveys and tried to then recruit them for user interviews, basically asked if they did the whole experience. Um, and that's how it looks like. So behind me, you can see it our Google Meet call. But wait, these are my colleagues. Um, and we just shared our chat tool. Uh, in this case, we use Chris. The multi-platform chat tool was easy and cheap. And we, uh, on, the, on the website, basically when they consented to using AI and participating in our <coughs> test, um, they would get either a WhatsApp QR code, so they would continue on their phone, or uh, on their desktop just a chat interface. I will explain more into what we tried and why later. And then through this conversation, images were sent, questions were asked, answers were given. We basically created this website. So this is actually the website of one of our users that we did this test with. Um, and then, as you can see, it's quite basic, but it's a full website that you can use to get new business for your event location, in this case. So how did the conversation flow go? We tested different ones, but this is the basic format of how we followed it through. First, 
we came in, we asked about the business needs, um, about the business intent, what's your business, what are you trying to do, how much did you think about it so far? Because oftentimes they didn't think so much. And, um, they just want to sell things. Hey, why do you want to sell it? What makes you special? Why should anyone care? Um, and we guided them basically through their think thinking as well. So we asked questions to challenge them. And if there were just shallow answers, we would go a little bit deeper to just really figure out what we should put on the website, basically. We also collected general materials, um, so photos, mainly a slider that you've already written, set us the Instagram page. We could handle everything for fewer humans, um, but we were also trying to figure out what do they have and what information do they actually have in these platforms. Um, and then we started with writing copy for the website, because we knew that's quite easy, it's tangible, people uh, give feedback on it, if you see some text, easy to work on. So we basically wrote them the copy. Of course, we used ChatGPC to do that uh, ourselves. Um, but then we sent it to them, we had back and forth, and we already understood how they were thinking about the copy, how they were interacting with copy that's proposed to them, um, we basically saw different styles of how they would attack with it, either general feedback about the tone of voice, maybe words that they didn't like, um, or something they completely misunderstood, um, or really, really detailed. I want this comma gone, I want that just this ending is wrong, or in Germany you can be more formal or informal, so do or see, um, but just basically for you. Um, just more formal or informal, um, and a lot of people care a lot about that. So we were switching that up, and it were easy ways to manipulate basically in the text really quickly. We asked about the core USPs or drafted them for them and got feedback on it, and then we would present them with the first draft. Basically, the website you just saw, a little bit less color, a little bit less images, a little bit quicker, uh, just through, uh, thrown together, and then we would refine it change the color based on their needs. But whenever the user would request a change, we would also tell them why we did an action. Because we thought the expert knows best. And the expert had a reason to choose. Maybe the color. Because maybe if you're offering yoga services or a yoga studio, you might want to take calmer colors than a fried pink with a neon green. I don't know. Um, so we actually also tried to advise them a little bit on what they put there. Also, if they send us really, really shitty images, they do a lot. <laughs> then we would say, hey, maybe you want to take a new picture or take one of our stock photos and then take a, take a new picture later. And then basically hand them over to the website editor to let them edit further, which was also an opportunity for us to observe how they behave after the chat. What do they change? How are they struggling with even? Because we could see, based on the tool we choose, uh, chose, we could see what they were doing, lines, and uh, even when they left the chat, we gave them a little bit of tips on the side, like a custom support agent who looks like, they yeah, see you struggle to find where to add your logo, you can find it there. So um, actually also thinking about not only guiding you through the onboarding, but maybe even we can find opportunities, give you uh, in product tips that help um, not just the channel industry. Okay, let's talk about some of the assumptions we had and that we tested. As our first assumption was, we have a great conversation with them. Probably takes around 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and then we present them with a perfect website and they're ready to go, just need to press publish, perfect fix sign. Um, right. Surprisingly, they actually stayed with us really, really long. Um, so we did the chat, but then the quality of the website didn't match and they did read really like it and a lot of things to change. Um, so we basically cut down the chat length a little bit and then uh, gave them a less finished website first and then build it up to, to match the quality that we wanted to achieve for them. In general, we played around a lot with the conversation flows. So the one I just presented is just one example, also not the best to be honest. Uh, but one that just explains a lot of the thinking that we had. We also played around with the device. As I already mentioned, we had people coming in uh, on desktop most of the time, and then we were getting them to scan a QR code to move to their mobile, because our first assumption was, okay, having a chat in front of your computer is 
really not that stimulating and you probably maybe want to move around, especially if you're having, like, if you're a small business, you have a lot of stuff to do, maybe wasn't the case, uh, they actually stayed. Um, so we switched it to being um, on the desktop uh, and they would just stay in the interface. Uh, but we could also, because it was set up as an AP test, we could just target both of them and then test two, three users just on mobile and see how that different differs. Because as well, our assumption was on mobile, people have the images, because probably they took the photos on their mobile phone and they might have not moved them to their desktop to just now create their website. Um, then we were generally really interested in the intent and to catalyst of users that we followed through the whole time. And then, as I already mentioned, the continued engagement with their website. So what did they do after they got the draft? Did they continue to edit? Did they publish immediately? And then how does it compare to the normal usage of our website and design? Um, and did I mention how long are people actually willing to talk to the AI? Sometimes we actually, like I think once or twice, we actually tried to test it a little bit and continued the conversation as they were answering. It took a while. <laughs> <laughs> I want to present a few numbers now. Um, we had 18 sessions over the course of one to two weeks. Um, plus was the only limiting factor we had was us coming up with new conversation flows and us being online, basically, because we were integrated in the live funnel and it was really, really easy to just get people with the right intent, exactly the users we wanted to test with. Um, and we tested a mobile or desktop with WhatsApp and first there was a tool we used uh, for uh, desktop in product basically experience. Um, and then what's very interesting is obviously 18 of, out of 18 people start in the chat um, and 17 out of 18 uh, stayed in the uh, info collector phase that we had. That surprised us a little bit. Um, then the people who stayed in the info collector uh, phase also received a draft. Um, I don't know why we have it twice with the numbers. Um, but then you can see that after they received the draft, there was a drop off of people who saw that the draft either wasn't matching the expectations or that that very detailed needs to change, um, where we think they didn't really reach the almost complete website where we just forwarded them to the website editor to do it themselves, or people also just left and literally created a new account five minutes after that with the same email address and <laughs> went around our flow. So uh, not everything is perfect, um, but I think it was a great exp exploration that we got to test a really diverse set of conversation approaches and general approaches on how we wanted to interact or our users to interact with AI and um, without basically any engineering effort, but integrating uh, the, the chat or the QR code, uh, which didn't take long to be honest. Uh, and then we actually built the product um, and we tested it uh, against our competitors, so Wix, Squarespace, the time we won, who basically had an AI onboarding as well. And at least in our tests, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt, um, they actually thought that ours delivered a higher perceived value to them than our competitors. So uh, what I just want to encourage all of you is when you need to build an AI experience or just any experience basically, aim for genuine user value and try it with realistic low cost tests with real humans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just need to step one more time. Because uh, it just brings you closest to create more value uh, for your users. Um, and with that, let's just build valuable AI experiences. And that's it. Thank you, Don. Thank you.